In doing a sebaceous cyst, rupture is a common problem. How we give the local is very important. First, we raise a little wheel in the skin and then give the anesthetic deep to the cyst first on both sides. Then we give anesthetic to lift the skin and separate it from the sebaceous cyst itself. And here we inject the anesthesia ahead of the advancing needle so the dissection plane at surgery would be fairly easy without injuring the cyst wall. Because the cyst wall is often thin and will rupture in many cases, we could make a decision to do a controlled rupture. In this, we dissect very carefully the top half, the superficial half of the cyst uh, of the skin. This is done by sharp dissection and we expose the upper half. Now to get to the lower half, because it is deeper and wider, we are likely to rupture it. So we're going to do a controlled rupture where we rupture it in its superficial part, not in its deep part, because it, if it ruptures in the deep part, it becomes a very messy operation. So here we are dissecting all around it to get at least nearly halfway down the depth of the cyst. We have to remember the cyst is not always perfectly spherical. This is another consideration in how we dissect the cyst. When the upper half of the cyst is completely exposed, we then rupture the part nearest the skin and express the sebaceous material in order to get the cyst to collapse and the wall will not then be as tense and prone to rupture as it is normally. And here we're cutting into the cyst at its uppermost part, squeezing out a lot of the contents of the cyst. So now the cyst wall is less tense, less likely to rupture, and we control it with an artery forceps, which would still give us traction. This, however, is a very thin wall cyst, and this one still can rupture. But with careful dissection, we can minimize that risk. This one, the cyst, was so thin walled, in fact, that even traction on the artery forceps grasping the uh, wall was causing some tearing of the cyst wall. However, we were able to dissect it out, and if ever a part of the cyst wall ruptures, what we will do is continue this dissection, as we will be doing here shortly, outside of an deep to the wall. Here we are doing that, getting around that thin, very thin portion and getting the entire cyst wall off. Here you can see it's tearing of the cyst, but it's quite superficial and it doesn't affect our dissection and a complete excision of the entire cyst wall. Here you can see how thin wall the cyst is in some areas. Thin walls is continued the dissection lateral to and around and deep to wherever a rupture occurs. So thin walls is, do require this particular uh, technique and we can still ensure a fairly complete cyst excision.
we always stay close to the cyst wall and try to minimize the amount of fat on the cyst because that minimizes bleeding. Using lignocaine with adrenaline also would help minimizing uh, oozing. In some cases, I just approximate the subcutaneous tissue with a single stitch 